In this test we wanted to measure the forces that are acting in high lines. We therefore rigged three different lines and put a force measuring device at the anchor point of each line. The first line was a 63 meter long pink tube of selectivity. This is an extremely stretchy webbing made of nylon. We set the standing tension, that's the tension when nobody is on the line, to 1.8 kN. This proved to be a really great tension to trick bounce hard. For walking it almost feels a bit too tight. Then a slackliner of 57 kilo mounted the line. The force in the line went up to 2.4 kN, which is equal to 240 kilos. When bouncing hard, the force started oscillating between 1.6 and 3.6 kN. One oscillation or bounce cycle took about 3 seconds. The slackliner then tried to leash fall as hard as he could to define the peak force. In the hardest leash fall, he managed to bring 4.3 kN or 430 kilos of force to the anchor points. Interestingly, a leaf fall at the lowest point of the bounce creates less force than hard bounces. The forces in the line are highest when the slackliner is in the middle. Here you can see how the force is decreasing while the slackliner gets closer to the anchor point. The two peaks to zero can be ignored. They are just occurring because the Bluetooth connection got lost for a split second. After that we tested the shorter line, 39 meters instead of 63 meters, also rigged on pink tube and with the same slackliner. The standing tension was slightly lower, on 1.4 kN this time. Similar results occurred. The biggest difference could be seen in the frequency of the bounces. The speed was increased to almost one bounce every two seconds. The last line had about the same length as the second one but was rigged on selectivity half marathon. This is a polyester webbing that has much less stretch compared to the pink tube. This time the forces went up much higher. The force when bouncing was oscillating between 1.6 and 4.4 kN. One bounce here took less than 2 seconds and the peak force in a leash fall reached 5.3 kN. In other words, using polyester webbing with lower stretch on rather short high lines puts more stress on the material and also higher forces on the body, especially when leash falling. As a last test we compared three leash fall scenarios. What you can see here is a force curve of 2 seconds that was recorded with 500 Hz. This graphic shows that the leash fall is not a shock load on the anchor points but is already well absorbed by the webbing. A heavier highliner can of course produce higher forces on the anchor points. It is also visible in this graph that a leash fall on a stretchier webbing leads to lower forces and is absorbed over a longer period of time.